There are a lot of fan bases that would defend their franchises as if they were at war. No, seriously, just get yourself in a Marvel and DC debate and you'll know what we're talking about. And then there's the Star Wars fandom, home to people who hate the franchise so much they'll attack their own stars. In this video, we'll be talking about why Star Wars has the worst fans ever. First up, what started the hatred? It all started when Ryan Johnson was announced to be directing the new Star Wars trilogy and people took issue with how he wanted to change the course of the franchise. First, a lot of them were used to a male protagonist like Luke Skywalker. A female one didn't sit right with them. People who grew up watching Star Wars started calling the shift woke propaganda. To make things worse, they didn't welcome a black actor to the resistance either. Actor John Boyega faced a lot of racism for his role, which would have been his big break in Hollywood. The release of Episode 7 led to cyberbullying the stars of The Force Awakens, making it look like the fanbase was one of the most toxic ones out there. And that's saying something, because we're all aware of toxic fans on social media. We won't name any because the comments will be an all-out war zone. So how did they react to a fresh new storyline with new actors and crew members? Let's look at some examples. Following up with how the actors were treated, Daisy Ridley, the lead actress of the new trilogy, was met with sexist comments telling her that her acting was not up to the archetype hero level, and this was all under a birthday post. Soon enough, she deactivated her social media, including Instagram, and actual supporters haven't heard from her since. Finn actor John Boyega had to deal with a lot of racism and discrimination, but the ex-stormtrooper didn't deactivate any of his social media accounts. Instead, Instead, he became a prominent supporter of the BLM movement and was seen attending protests. Fans didn't stop at just the cast of the movies. Director Ryan Johnson received death threats demanding that he should be fired from the franchise because The Force Awakens, The Last Jedi, and The Rise of Skywalker were an insult to the previous movies. That's excluding the prequel films, of course. Producers J.J. Abrams and Kathleen Kennedy got the short end of the stick, too. Like the director, they were also threatened to exit the trilogy, while Kennedy, being a woman, received a pinch of sexism with all the demands. The cast and crew were called incompetent, talentless, and accused of enforcing their woke agenda on the fanbase. Some offensive comments were personal and insensitive, too. Moving on to the situation with the Rose actress. Unfortunately, Kelly Marie Tran was the actress who got the worst treatment. Fans hated her character, Rose Tico, in The Last Jedi and thought she was an annoying filler in the movie. The final push was when Rose saved Finn from sacrificing himself as he was driving straight into a stampede of the First Order led by Kylo Ren. Oh, not to mention that kiss that probably had some of the audience at the theater theaters leaving their seats. Tran had to deal with death threats, racism, sexism, and offensive comments about her looks and acting skills. Just the whole package from your ever-so-friendly Star Wars fans. The young actress, who barely made a name for herself in the film industry, was forced to delete all her Instagram posts to avoid any more harassment by superfans. Her bio now says, afraid but doing it anyway. Looks like the haters haven't won just yet. Besides, isn't a soldier in the Resistance supposed to be brave? Forget the character, the actress is just as qualified. Also, supporters of the original George George Lucas trilogy thought hiring an Asian actress was another way for the crew to be unnecessarily feminist and diverse. If you look back at episodes 4 to 6, there were hardly any non-white actors in the cast. The keyboard warriors were so used to an ensemble like that, they found it hard to get used to any diversity, coming up with the hate The Last Jedi received. Okay, so to be in the Star Wars fandom, there's one decision you have to make. You either loved The Last Jedi, or you absolutely hated it. Judging by the reviews, the majority of the fans despised episode 7 of the franchise. But don't get us wrong, the movie has a fair share of supporters out there who consider it to be the best Star Wars film ever made. The review bombing is apparent with an IMDb rating of 6.9 out of 10 as compared to a 91% score on Rotten Tomatoes. The irony in all this was that the haters were making demands to get Ryan Johnson and Kathleen Kennedy to get fired when Episode 9 was already under production. Sending out death threats didn't stop The Rise of Skywalker from releasing in cinemas. Plus, Episode 8 made over a billion dollars at the box office. Wouldn't call that a flop now, would we? Now, for the planned remake. If we told you that some angry people who saw The Last Jedi started a fundraiser to remake the entire film, would you believe us? Not only did some anonymous users begin collecting funds from fans, but they managed to raise around $90 million. The remakers had no clue what the story of the genre-bending redo of the film will be, nor did they announce any cast members. People didn't even know if any celebrities were involved. Some well-known star who acknowledged this stunt was Seth Rogen, who simply asked how they managed to find investors without a script or cast. The answer? The popularity would get them a life-changing meeting with Disney Studios. Ryan himself found the site and sarcastically said, please, 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 please actually happen. Please, 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 please. We're sure that the fans turned producers found no humor in his statement since most of the blame was pointed at him. The funniest part is that the website for the pledge is no longer active and people don't really know where all the funds went. Don't get us wrong, the movement was completely legal with attested documentation available to see. The remakers were also strict about not wanting anyone's credit card details when donating to the cause. But 
but as legal as it was, it was absolutely pointless. The Last Jedi is just chilling on top with the 1.333 billion it made at the box office, with another billion the sequel made. Let's look at some other actors that fans didn't leave behind. It's like the cast of the OG trilogy have some sort of shield protecting them from an angry mob out to get anyone who's not Mark Hamill or Carrie Fisher. And don't get us started with how they reacted when the producers killed off Han Solo in the first installment of the new trilogy. Whoops, spoilers, remember Jar Jar Binks? Fans absolutely hated this character, and there are still some memes you'd bump into online. Well, the actor behind the Gungan Outcast opened up about the harassment he faced when Tran was going through something similar. The worst part is that Ahmed Best said that some of the reactions almost drove him to end his career and also his own life. You heard that right. Fans almost made an actor take his own life. The only time we've heard a story like this is when fresh off the boat actress Constance Wu talked about the betrayal she felt from the Asian community after her tweets about the show's renewal. But since we're talking about Star Wars, you'd think the so-called supporters would target adults only, right? Wrong. Jake Lloyd played young Anakin Skywalker back in The Phantom Menace, the first prequel film of the franchise that was the beginning of a lot of problems. What fans did was they bullied the child to such an extent he quit acting. In all fairness, the movie wasn't the best thing Lucasfilms has given to us, but to attack a poor kid is no way to go. Lastly, is there any hope for the fandom? Surprisingly, there is a uniting force after all. The new Disney Plus shows like The Mandalorian, The Book of Boba Fett, and Andor have received some positive reviews where the creators are mixing both nostalgia and a fresh story. Speaking of nostalgia, one of the things the fanbase loved was when they announced that Ewan McGregor was reprising his role as Obi-Wan Kenobi in his solo series. There are still some upcoming TV series on the way, like Ahsoka, Skeleton Crew, The Acolyte, and Lando. They're all based on characters we know of, so there aren't any new original Jedis or Sith Lords that could disrupt the lore. Hopefully, the newfound love for the galaxy far, far away stays in the long run. Trouble could arise with Ahsoka, which stars Rosario Dawson as the titular lead, because you just know how people react to a female protagonist. There aren't any announcements for any future films or sequels as of yet. No wonder social media is so quiet these days. And that's all for this video. Let us know what you think about some of the fan reactions in the comments below. Leave a like and subscribe to our channel for more content. We'll see you in the next one.